Good morning, everyone. It's good to see all of you here today. Um, and thank you, Kim, for the beautiful music this morning. Um, a quick reminder that if you um, want any names read next week in the memorial reading, um, please uh, put, fill this out and leave it in the uh, Nancy. Leave it in the offering plate. Or give it directly to you with offering plate. All right. And um, one important item of business, Josie, would you be willing to help me draw a name, please? Shake them up real good. Let's see. Arlene, I think. And I understand we have um, Magnetic schedules to put up for next year. Um, and Lori, any other uh, yeah, announcements? As you mentioned, the schedules. We did not get the magnets printed. The magnets printed are $1,000 for us to print the magnets. It's crazy. So I went into my little save money mode and I made little flyers on tape board and we took our last couple of years' magnets and put them up for magnetic strip. And I bought two sided tape from the dollar store. So it didn't cost us a fortune to do these. It, it, it may be maybe 20 bucks or something like that. But I'm going to pass these around. Whoever didn't get one last night, um, take one. If you have a friend that you know that would appreciate one, please take one and give it to them. And so on. Um, I can get more of these. I only grabbed what I had here. So I'm going to get one. You guys get my one. Beautiful. All right. Um, Lori, any other announcements yeah, regarding craft show and stuff? Fair enough. This site so spread out. Okay. So. Those were passed up last night um, to finish off chicken and biscuit so that we can get that done and out of the way. The last, yesterday was our last one. Thank you. We only had 64 people here. I had a great turnout for help. I thank everybody that was there. It was wonderful to be all done and cleaned up and been able to leave at 7.30. But then we had maintenance guys that decided to, to get involved. And they cleaned out that grease trap with the dishwasher room that hasn't been cleaned out in 20 years. So, um, yeah, so it was quite a job. But they, Joe and Brian, cleaned that out after working chicken and biscuits and everything else. So that was wonderful um, to get done. Like I said, we had 64 people, 17 takeouts. It was $38 in tips. Um, Total overall profit for all four dinners was $2,298. So considering we had low turnout on three of them, um, we did pretty well. So $2,298. And that money um, normally would have stayed in fundraising accounts to do repairs and upkeep and all that. But that money we're going to transfer over to the general fund to help close our deficit. So that money will get there. And then we move on to Crash Show. That's this coming week. Flyers are going around. Please take whatever you want or wherever you can put them up or put them in your car window or whatever. Pass the word. Put it on your Facebook page, please. It is in the Gazette. There's signs up around the neighborhood. Most of them I have the dates changed on. A couple of them I missed. <laughs> so if you see the wrong date, give me a jingle and I'll take care of it. Um,
everything wrapped up, they put sail, and, and <coughs> right on the, what they are. Nuts, no nuts. Okay, nuts or no nuts. Um, don't leave anything at the church. Get it to the fire hall. <coughs> yeah. Bring it to the fire hall. You can bring it Friday night, 6 o'clock at the fire hall. Friday night, we're going to set up. I need lots of help at the fire hall for Friday night for, for set up. Because we have to tear down the legal hall and then set up for craft show. And then Saturday after the show, we have to tear the show down and set back up for, for bingo. So I need lots of help. People that can swing some tables and chairs and stuff. Um, and some little ones that can get down on the floor and mark with tape. Um, I'm going to need that. Um, at 6 p.m., those who have baked goods can bring them and drop them off. Um, can we open that side door so that they can come in the side door? Yeah. Okay, good. So they can just drop baked goods off starting Friday evening. Um, do not leave them here in the church. Baskets, please get them to Kathy so that we know what we have and we don't end up there Saturday morning with half a dozen baskets and having to do a basket rental with that. We need more than half a dozen in my trunk. Pardon? I have a half a dozen in my trunk to give her. Okay. So um, please contribute to that. If you don't have baskets and you have cash that you want to donate so that we can do something with that, that's fine. I'm also looking for anybody who has a generous heart. Um, I need some, a couple baskets. There's a large basket for at the table. We've got some loose baskets. We've got a laundry basket. We've got a printer. Um, we're in printer with ink that's going on, but I, I'm short a couple large baskets. So anybody who would be willing to donate something that could go on the large basket for at the table. Um, and usually, that would be worth more than, i say $75, $100 is usually for the big basket for the table. Um, it, it's the range that I'm looking for. Um, what else do I have? Those that are healthy, hopefully you got your helpers. Um, I'm working on it. Hmm? I'm working on it. Yes. And, um, sorry, my mind's going on. Thank you, Lori, for all the work on all these fundraisers. Um, and thank you, everyone, for, for all the ways you help. Um, I, I will, I am disappointed to miss the craft show because it's always fun and seeing all the crafts. I will be in Denver next weekend and the commute would be a little bit tough. Um, but uh, Angie Stanishevsky will be back as um, preacher. She's been here before. And she also knows the drill for the Memorial Sunday, so that's at least good. Um, if there are no other announcements, let us join together in our call to worship. <coughs> Steadfast one, there is no wavering in you. Fountain of truth, you reveal what is true and what is not. Eternal wisdom, your mind and heart are stayed on loving us. Let us pray. Unwavering one, we are thankful for the clarity found in you. You welcome us into your presence. 
even when we aren't sure of our approach to you. We delight in knowing that even when we come stumbling over ourselves, your love is sure to pick us up and steady us. Because you are love, you keep your promises to us. Help us walk unwavering in the love that keeps us our promises too. Amen. Let us join in hymn number 10. We'll sing verses 1 and 2 now, and then 3 and 4 later, How Great Thou Art. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, in this season when families start together, start together together, we pray for our families. We pray particularly for loved ones who are sick. We pray for Daryl and all those who are sick, and we pray that you would give them comfort and healing. We pray for all the children who are facing particular struggles because of 
viruses and other things that they um, might not have been exposed to as much in the last couple of years. And we pray for the hospital staff caring for them. We pray for those who are recovering, particularly the young woman from the college who's recovering from the shooting. We pray also for those who mourn, for Dave Sharp's family, and we pray that you would be with them in this time. We thank you also for opportunities to celebrate. We thank you for the wedding last weekend and the safe travels for everyone. We pray that you would watch over us in this time, that you would help family gatherings be an opportunity to celebrate and remember and build new memories. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our offering plates are by the door. Let us take a moment to sing the doxology and dedicate our offerings. Divine One, receive our gifts in the love we give them. Thank you for blessing us with gifts to share so that the needs of your people can be met. We offer our gifts with made-up minds. May what we give be used to facilitate wholeness for all. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 to 25. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. Nor shall, no, long, no more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies in a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall, enjoy, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall, not bear, they shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food, shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. A song comes from Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. 
He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, starting at verse 5. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that, that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your souls. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> some of our readings today talk about change. Change is part of life, but it's not always popular. At the same time, when changes happen, if we can't adapt to the change, it's hard to survive. I don't know if you've heard people say, but I hear it a lot, well, we've never done it that way, or we've always done it this other way. And I've also heard sometimes, well, you know, we tried that 20 years ago and it didn't work. I'll admit I say these things too sometimes, but there are some times that changing what we do can be necessary. The other day I heard a radio interview with a CEO of some big company whose attitude was, well, if your business isn't growing, it's dying. And I've heard people in churches say that too. And yes, there, there is a certain sense where growing and expanding and doing all kinds of things all at once can be very gratifying. But I think it's also important to just be aware of who we are, what our gifts and situation are, in being the right size for the time we're in. It is a struggle sometimes to look back and remember and to think of how things used to be and compare them to how they are now. But at the same time, I think it's important to just say, okay, this is the situation we're in now. What do we do? But is growth and success the only measure of our lives? Whether we're talking about businesses or communities or churches, are we here just to be successful and just to be focused on numbers? I remember when I was serving the church in Niagara Falls, we would get these messages about growth from the state office. And it was always a little bit weird because they would be talking about, well, if you don't have at least 200 members or at least have 100 people on a Sunday morning, and I'd be looking around thinking, okay, what relevance does this have for us? Is success the only measure? I'll leave it to business owners to sort out for themselves what their priorities should be. But I think as far as churches go, we can have other priorities too. We can still meet. We can still make sure that we're talking about God and God's message for us. We can still make sure that we're serving our community. I'm so proud of the ways that here at St. Peter's, we have continued, despite our financial struggles sometimes, we have continued to... I'm not sure quite what's going on with this. I'll try not to hit the microphone. 
um, means I just can't gesture too much. Uh, we have still served the community. Even in the midst of the pandemic, when we couldn't do a lot of other things, we made sure that people could get access to the resources from the closet. We've still gotten back to having the dinners, which not only are a fundraiser, but when you look at how sometimes people will just sit at the table and talk, and will sometimes come in and look around to see, well, I know my friends were coming, maybe I'll see them here tonight. We aren't just about success. When things change, the question is, what do we rely on? What is the steady point in the midst of our change? Over the centuries, people of faith have relied on God. Their ideas and their explanations have changed sometimes. The way they interpret and apply God's teach teachings have changed. But they have believed that God is still there and still with them even in the worst of times. This week, there's been a lot of talk about the elections, and I'm going to let other people try to make sense of that. There's been a lot of soul-searching and already talking about the next election, when the people that are elected now just have to do the job of governing. And in talking about the different candidates, we sometimes hear people on both sides using the Bible to make their case about what the policies should be. And this can get confusing sometimes, and there are some people who would say that the Bible really doesn't have any value for us if it can be used to justify things like slavery as well as justifying the end of slavery. I usually remind my students that it's not just a matter of looking at what the Bible says, but looking at the assumptions that people are making as they interpret the Bible. But I think we can also look at the end results. When Jesus tells us to love one another, or we sing the song, they'll know we are Christians by our love, and then we end up not being very loving, that doesn't help us make our case for Christianity. The prophet Isaiah talks about a new heaven and a new earth. And he lists many traumatic situations. He lists and describes the frustration and sadness of building houses and not getting to live them, live in them, of planting gardens and not eating the food your garden produces. He mentions the trauma that people still experience sometimes today of seeing children not live a long life. And Isaiah says all those things will be gone. God is creating something new. And in the Gospel reading, people were looking at the temple, looking at how beautiful it was, and it makes sense. If you're going to go and pray to God in a temple, if you're going to come to a church, it's good to want to make it look nice. It's good to want to honor God. But Jesus reminds the people that earthly things like that do not survive. Now, for some Christians, Jesus' teachings were a way of criticizing Judaism and rejecting the temple. But I think in a larger sense, it's important for us to remember that as I tried to emphasize in the days when we couldn't be together in church, the church is more than a building. It's okay for us to love the building and value the building and value the physical connections. But the church and serving God is, more, is about more than just being in a building. But it's also not just about the physical buildings. It's easy for us to rely on what we've always done, to rely on what worked in the past. And when there are things from the past that we can still keep, that's great. But there are some times that the things of the past just don't work. So then the question is, what new things will take their place? At the college, we have a new president, and there's a lot of enthusiasm. Also, a lot of people that are a little bit hesitant, waiting to see 
how things will go. There's also a new guy taking over as faculty senate leader. Um, I'm still not sure what I was thinking, saying yes to that. But the interesting thing is that we're starting to change the conversations. We still have to talk about the nitty gritty details of budgets, but he's trying to change the conversation from just saying, okay, what, what money do we have and what can we afford to do? To starting to say, well, let's make sure we're clear on our values and our priorities, and then let's build the budget around those priorities. It's a very different model than just saying, well, this is the money we have, what are we going to do with it? I think that's a model that many of us and many of our communities should face. Rather than just saying, well, this is what we've always put in the budget. This is what we've always done in our community. To think clearly about what our values are and to work from there. Last weekend, I had the privilege of going down to the beach and spending a few days with students. And it's always interesting to hear their stories. Many of them have faced extreme struggles. One of the students her was born here in America, but her family's Ukrainian, and so she was also still very worried for many family members over there. But with all those challenges, they still persist. They still were willing to, despite what people say about kids today, we had 20 young people willing to come and talk about their faith, talk about their values, talk about how to bring their faith into the world. I also spent some time this week with some veterans our Senior Wishes organization, sponsored by the United Church Home Society, presented over 50 hero boxes to veterans in our community. And I got to deliver several of them. And then on Friday, we had two Canisius alums who are vets, and we did a special program at the college. One of the veterans turned out to be the husband of the man who was, or the husband of the woman, sorry, who was the... Um, receptionist at my kid's school. When I saw the paper with the address and I saw the name and it said that his wife had passed away, I'm like, okay, that name sounds familiar, and indeed it was, was him. But it was so nice to sit and talk with him and then also to visit a man who lived just a few blocks from here, who apparently, um, as soon as he showed up for training, um, one of the officers gave him scissors and told him to start cutting the grass and Nine and a half hours later, he was still there, and one of the officers came by and said, well, what are you doing? He said, well, no one told me to stop. <laughs> but how wonderful it has been to be able to support veterans, to honor their service, to give a small indication of our appreciation. Our world is changing around us. What do we hold on to? What things will we modify and adapt? What things will we leave behind? The answers may be different for each of us, but it is still important to ask and to think about and to turn back to God to see where God is leading us in this time. We come to this table with thankful hearts. We give thanks because God has invited us here. All God's children are invited to the Lord's Supper. We come humbly to the table, knowing that we have not earned our way here, but are invited guests at this feast of love. 
We eat at this table to remember that on the night before Jesus died, he ate with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. God of grace, with thanksgiving we come to your table. Send your spirit upon us so that we know that all who eat and drink in this room and around the world are one body, one holy people, giving thanks to you in an endless song of praise. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave your life freely for our salvation. Jesus said, this is my body, broken for you. Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Christ. We take the cup with thankful hearts. We drink because that same night Jesus also took a cup and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends saying, drink this cup. This cup poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave your life freely for our salvation. Our presence at this communion table is a sign. Here we remember the gift that is Jesus, the gift of his birth, his life, and his death on the cross. At this table we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and we remember that we are waiting in hope to see Jesus again. Jesus said, this cup is the blood, is my blood, the cup of salvation. Let us drink in remembrance of him. Lord, we thank you for inviting us to this banquet. Help us to remember the gifts we have received and to live as brothers and sisters, members of one family. All praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us close with verses 3 and 4 of How Great Thou Art.
as you depart this space. Keep watch and pray that the things you find pleasure in do not distract you from the one who made all things for you to enjoy. Be unwavering in your openness to the promise of God's love. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Amen. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Have a good week, everyone.